Uh, lastly, my last question is linked to what you just answered, mm -hmm. um, and it's two. I mean, two way. It's a two way question or two way answer yeah. for the question. What would be your advice? First, to uh, African scientists generally, especially in academics, mm -hmm. to surmount the problem of funding and general progress in the area area of science and research in Africa, not only Japanese research, but research generally. What will you tell the African scientists? And at the same time, what will you drop for the policy makers, the African policy makers, so that we can have some kind of progress in science generally, not only in African mm. Yeah, I, I think for the African scientists, that I, I think um, the advice I have to give to them is to understand the ethics, the ethical implications of doing research. Okay, this is very important. I remember I gave a, when I was in Nigeria, I gave a workshop on that. Um, people need to understand that that are you know what is called responsible conduct of research. That is a way to do research, and that. Uh, you cannot um, cut corners in doing research. Um, research has to be uh, done properly and ethically in terms of the, uh, the approach to use of resources that you have gotten for your, for your research, in terms of the, how you present your data, how you analyze your data, and how you disseminate your data. These are very important. And one thing is this, when people can't trust what you are doing and how you present those data, how we, you know, people become suspicious. And you know, these days, it's about global collaboration. People want to collaborate. Why are the Western people mostly going to, to, the, to um, Asia to collaborate with them? Uh, there must be a reason why they, they are not coming to Africa as much as they go to Asia. And so that's what we need. We African scientists, we need to figure that out and find out. Um, and I think it's boiled down to responsible conduct of research. When we get funding for research, we should use that fund to do exactly what we, what we have proposed. That's number one. Number two, we need to understand that what people do now is team science. The era of doing things, um, science alone, um, though that that period is gone. People look at things uh, in a multidisciplinary approach. People don't just look at things from one perspective anymore. African scientists, they have to understand that that the way the research is done now is by um, is collaborative research. You have to have people and multiple disciplines involved looking at things holistically and not just from one side. And number three, African scientists have to understand that they have to think about translation. How do you translate your data? Trans research has been translational driven. Yes, there is need to do discovery research, but at the end, you need to think about, so what? How do we put that into, how do we translate that? How does that benefit people from outside. And finally, African scientists have to organize and mobilize and hold their government accountable and make noise and make sure that governments, their government do put in money for research that they can compete for. Not only going outside to look from outside, but they have to make sure that their government are putting money in, in for research that they can compete for that. That's, so that's the uh, what I think. Then when it comes to the policy makers, the policy makers again, uh, it's all about the, the last point that I made. Um, uh, I think agencies like WHO, um, they need to um, make African government understand that there is need, that research is very important. Uh, that has to be a way, World Bank, for example, there has to be a way to make African government commit, even if it is 1% of their GDP, just 1% of their GDP into research. I know a lot of some countries that they, are, they don't even have 
a ministry that is uh, in charge of research. If you look at here in, in, in Canada, for example, you have Canadian Institute for Health Research. In U.S., you have NIH. In every country, you have agencies that are responsible for, and their money comes direct from the government. Policymakers have to make African government understand that, that even if it means putting 1% of their GDP into research, that's huge. And not only committing that money into research, but when they do give that money out, they make sure that those that the, the, the fund is used appropriately and for whatever people have proposed to do. So I think that's what the, pol the policymakers, they need to be sensitized to understand the importance of research and to understand the importance of homegrown research. Everything cannot be done for Africa from outside. They have to understand that they have to have the lead and the lead is says he who who plays the pipe and control you know the, the tone. So if you have the money and you are putting in the money, you control how the research will be done. Yeah. But if the money is coming from outside, you have no control over it. They will come in and do what, what they think is good for them and not what is good for you. And I think that's what um the African government need to think about. Thank you very much for yeah. Taking the time to take this interview, so we really appreciate you. Thank you.